Coding Made Easy. So what's up everybody, this is Peter, aka Coding Made Easy, coming to you with your third Python Made Easy tutorial, and congratulations on passing the first two tutorials. So you're on your way on becoming a expert Python programmer. So as we learned in the last tutorial, uh, all variables are is allow you to store values and modify them and they store the values within memory and allow you to modify the values in memory. Uh, sorry uh, for if there's a little, if you hear some cars in the background, sorry I have my window open, it's a, it's a bit hot in my room. Uh, so anyways, let's continue. So in this tutorial, we're going to be addressing uh, the two, two different data types, which are numbers and strings, and we're going to be looking up uh, some arithmetic. Okay, now to start off, I did not tell you this in the last tutorial. I don't think I did, but uh, Python is what we call a dynamic, uh, dynamically typed language, sorry. So what this basically means is that the types that are defined or the variable types and stuff that are defined in Python are determined at runtime. So they're not determined at compile time, they're determined at runtime. Now, if you don't understand that, don't worry. You don't, don't worry about it too much. But what it means is I can do something like this. So if we take a variable held from my last tutorial, I can set it to a value of 10 and I can print that value and just print health. And then I can go ahead and then do this. And then I can print that. And if we look at the result, we see that it says 10 and then it says uh, health at the bottom. Now, you might say, hey, wait a minute. So first health stores a numerical value and then all of a sudden health can store a string value, right? And those are the two data types that we're gonna be talking about. Uh, in this tutorial, but as you can see, it stores a different data type. This one's storing an integer, this one's storing a string. How is it possible? Well, it determines that runtime. So once it gets to this point, it says, okay, we're storing just a regular value. We don't have any quotations here. So we're gonna store this as a number. And we print it, or whenever we do any operations on this, we're going to treat it as a number, okay? And then when we go here and we reassign it, it determines that because we have our, our quotations there, we are storing a string value. And so it says, okay, now from now on until health is assigned to something else, we are going to treat health as a string value. And so every operation we do on this is treated as a string value. So just to prove to you I'm not lying, let's take this for example, okay? This is storing a numerical value, a number. If I was to say plus A and I run this, we get errors, okay? It doesn't run properly. But if I say plus one, and we run this, as you can see, it says 11, because it treats it as a numerical value. So let's go down here. If I do plus one, we try to run it, uh, errors happen, it doesn't work. Uh, and then if we try to do plus A, and we run this, as you can see, it adds it there, right? So based on the uh, data type that is stored in, inside it, it determines how everything should be calculated. Now note, even though this is not allowed, right? You notice that we don't have an error. Our IDE never gave us an error. That is the difference between a statically and dynamically typed language. Because the, the data type isn't specified, for example, if we were using a C language, in order to specify an integer like health like this, we'd have to do something like this, and health is equal to 10 or 20 or whatever. So we specify the data type and, and it has to remain that data type unless we convert it to another data type. So the compiler knows that before we even run the program that health has to be an integer in python it doesn't work that way it just we don't know the data type we determine it when we need to access it or do any operations on it then it says hey this is an integer so we can add numerical values to this but if we try to add string values that's not allowed and then we throw an error at runtime so that's the difference between a dynamically typed and a statically typed language but if you don't remember that don't worry about it too much. You don't. It's not that that important for now um, as a beginner. 
Okay, so uh, just to be clear, we're we talked about two different data types in this tutorial. So we have a, a number data type. So a number can be any number we want. We can store decimal values, uh, which are considered floating point numbers. And we can look into uh, each uh, data type more in depth in a later tutorial. Uh, but we can store numerical values and we can also store string values. Now string values are just a collection, like a string of characters. So we can uh, put sentences or whatever we want to put. Anything within this quotation mark is going to be stored within this variable type right there. So that's basically it uh, for the, our two basic data types. Now, to end this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some arithmetic uh, when it comes to numerical values. And some of these can be applied to string. As you saw, we could use the plus sign to append other strings to concatenate strings together. So we could use a plus sign to append another string to another string. So we could use that. Uh, but if we look at numerical uh, values or the operators that we have, we can perform certain uh, operations uh, based on um, based on certain uh, input. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to set our first number. We're going to set that equal to 10 and we're going to set our second number equal to um, 3. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to return the sum. So to do that, we can easily just do a number, one variable plus the next variable. So we can add variables together, right? Because remember, all this is a storage location in memory. So whenever we do this, we check. 10 plus 3 and that value is going to be 13. So if we want to do a subtraction with a difference, so simple, we use the minus sign and we can do that. Simple. So if we want to find the product, which is the result of multiplication, we use the star symbol. Okay, so the asterisk is used for multiplication. If we want to find the quotient, we do we use the forward slash and the forward slash means the quotient now we have uh with three more operations that we're going to address but we're just going to run this quickly just to show you that i'm not lying so if we look at the sum what we our first value is 10 what is 10 plus 3 13 we get that right there the difference 10 minus 3 is 7 the product 10 times 3 is 30 and the quotient 10 divided by 3 is 3.33 blah, blah, blah. And we got a number there. Okay, so we're going to be looking at three more things. So the first thing we're going to look at is to do the power of something. So to find the power of something, I don't know what the result of the power is. So we're just going to put power. We put two asterisks and we do that. So... Uh, just so we don't get confused, we run this. So 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. Okay. So if we want to find the remainder, we use the modulus uh, operator. Okay. So this allows us to uh, do the division and return the remainder. So we do this by using the percent sign and then we put the value after. So this divided by this and give us the remainder. Okay, so if we run this, 10 divided by three, if we, the remainder, how many times can three go into it? We get the remainder, we get the remainder one. Now, for the last one, we have a floored uh, quotient. And, um, to be honest, I don't think this one is very important, but uh, it might have uses. So we do two forward slashes and um, and then we put the second number. Now I'm going to put, firstly, I'm going to put the quotient and then I'm gonna do the forward quotient just to show you the difference. So once we run this, as we can see, the quotient returned the number with a decimal value added, appended to it. But the floored quotient removes that and returns the, the uh, floored value. So that means if this was, for example, 3.9, blah, 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 
it would still return three. If it was 3.7 or 3.8, even if it's above five, it wouldn't round it up. It rounds it down because it's forward, okay? So that's all it means. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and bye for now.